Okay, hi brothers and sisters in Christ. I got to make this fast because it's 9:38. Still Saturday, March 14th. I was going to give you my honest opinion about Revelation 1:7 that behold every eye will see him even those who pierced him even so come. Okay. It's possible and I could be wrong about this, but Okay, now, uh, Lord, help me remember all this stuff. Um, when I was in the 8th grade, I saw a UFO, and I know it was a UFO, although my father said, oh, it's probably something the Air Force is working on. Well, maybe, but come in to think about it. Why I come to think about it, it, the Lord brought it to my remembrance, the video well, a few people were showing it. Um, I think Dabu7 had one up. Uh, someone shared it with me. I saw a couple people. Way out in outer space, there is an object that looks like a wheel within a wheel. It looks really huge. And we know that, well, we don't know how big the one was for Ezekiel that came of the chariot that got Ezekiel, but he talked about a wheel within a wheel. Sorry, I need to keep this right here. All right. It didn't sound to me like it was bigger than planet Earth, though, or wouldn't it have sick? This is terrible. I'm sorry about the lighting. I'll try to do better and prepare, but this just came to me as I was praying, and I wanted to get it out that... Uh, be, um, oh shoot uh, one of them channels I like but her name is I thought was the voice of Deborah Traveris but it's not her name is Carol truth uh, something with truth in it well anyway I saw on the right a video she put out it's really long an hour and some but it says something about if you hover over the title, the part where it goes dot, 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 you can read the rest of the title. And in it, it said, it said, what's next, dot, dot, dot. And part of it was fake rapture, fake alien rapture. Okay. Now, a lot of us have believed that when the first rapture happens, they're going to make out like the aliens took us. Because we weren't the ones that were going to be cooperative and love everybody. Like we hate people, like we're haters, but we're not. We don't hate the people, we hate the sin. And I think everybody here knows that, how I feel. I treat everybody the same. I don't snub anyone. I don't care if they wear a coexist sticker on their walker. I don't care. Anyway, the point is, uh, they may not like me so much, but I love them all. And, but the government's going to play it up that we're the haters. But I, I see that as coming later. The point is, how do I word this? Help me, Lord. This thing in the sky looks like it's really huge. What comes to my mind is some kind of mothership. It's going to sound crazy, I know, but we know that there are fallen angels and their demons, which are the disembodied spirits of the Nephilim. When the fallen ain't, there was 200 fallen angels that came to earth and mated with women back in the days of Noah they had children who were not uh, fully human they were half human half fallen angel they were called the Nephilim many of them were giants men of renown known for their height alright 
And we've had archaeologists, uh, Steve Quayle, Tom Horn, uh, I think is one of them, uh, which he was working with Chris Putman. But anyway, certain people that are on YouTube have discovered these gigantic skulls and skeletons. And when soldiers in Iraq discovered them, Okay, they discovered some in Iraq. I don't remember what happened. I think they, if I remember right, they were told to get out. Special ops probably sent in to collect them. The government doesn't want that stuff known. <laughs> then we might believe something. Anyway, they are the bones of the Nephilim. Okay. Now, having said all that, we know they're the ones behind making the UFOs, all right? There's no such thing as an alien from another planet. They're fallen angels and demons in the form of a humanoid-like figure. And they can abduct our bodies. If you're not Christian and you're not keeping the blood of Jesus pleaded over you and your family, like the guy in that movie that was a true story, Fire in the Sky, he got away from his group and he saw this fire in the sky and he was just standing there looking up at it and he, they swooped him right up. And... Uh, as he started remembering things, they showed what he was remembering. Okay, that was an awesome story. I tell you what, it was spooky, but it could have been Hollywood eyesed, <laughs> whatever. But my point is, I have a feeling that there could be a fake alien rapture. I don't know if it will be before we're gone or after, but this thing about seeing him in the sky, I've always felt that was going to be at the second rapture. I don't know why. The Lord hasn't told me that. I just... Because... The scripture that says, when the apostles are asking, Lord, when? Um, when are all these things going to happen? And what will be the sign of the end? The first thing Jesus says is, be, be careful that you are not deceived. Take heed, lest ye be deceived. Okay. How would the saints of God be deceived? If they saw people being whooshed up into this big, or a UFO of some kind, whether it's the mothership or not. Um, I get that from Independence Day. But anyway, that show is more true than you'd like to believe because that Area 51 thing and all going way down under and all that study on UFO that's for real that's for real and Phil Schneider gave testimony about it and he got killed for it because they one of them creatures he shot and it got a shot off from his laser gun and cut his cut his hands, cut his fingers off bef from this hand before he got a shot off and killed it. So anyway, they're, they're killable. They're, that movie is more real than people want to believe. But anyway, um, what I'm trying to say is we must pray that we be not deceived. That if, by some chance, we're still here, 
when that happens, Jesus said, if they tell you, lo, he is here, or behold, he's out in the desert, don't go for, oh, let, let, let me pull it up real quick. The Lord will understand. Uh, I'll pray when I get back from taking Buddy out because I got to look this up. Lo, he is here. Let's see. For they will say, Lo, he is here. Uh, behold, he is in the inner room. Scripture. That's real close. Okay. All right. Matthew 24. 26 this is it Matthew 24 26 okay see I have told you in advance so if they tell you there he is in the wilderness do not go out or here he is in the inner rooms do not believe it for just as the lightning comes from the east and flashes as far as the west, so will the coming of the Son of Man be. See, it's going to be like that. We're taken up like lightning, and we're out of here. And But someone's going to come along, or something, making people believe. See, I think it's got to be the first rapture. And then the fake alien thing, if they want to show it in front of people, people being lifted up and saying, see, those people were taken by aliens. You see? And they'll probably even get one on the news. Probably take a droid up or something. I don't know. I don't know that part. I just want to say it is of my opinion that Revelation 1-7 is talking about Jesus will appear in the clouds with power and great glory before the second rapture when the multitude too large to number is at their wits end and they really need to see him or whatever I don't know I just threw that in there <laughs> I would be at my wits end <laughs> because I'm tired and I know they're going to be very tired and hot and hungry and thirsty and so I just feel like we're out of here any day now because that scenario is not that far away. Think about it. Under martial law, medical martial law, we've, we've had the president declare a state of, uh, well, we have state of emergency, national state of emer emergency. I don't know why I can't remember the word for that and I'm scratching my nose. Anyway, I'm going to end it here. I hope I made sense. There's something to that thing up in the sky. It's too round to be a planet. It's too ornamental. The, the, it's almost like a cross, but yet there's a, a thing in the middle that breaks that up. Reminded me of something Catholic if you really want to know the truth of it. And that circle, if you haven't seen that, let me know. I'll pull it up. I'll put it in the first comment or something, okay? One of the videos where they're showing it in outer space, it looks huge compared to the sun, the earth, and the planets near but it could be closer it could be the perspective of I think it was the NASA satellite imagery and that thing was coming across and poof, they made it disappear somehow they saw it I might have even did a video on it. Anyway, they cut the feed and it made it disappear. 
so you couldn't see it anymore. But it could have been a lot closer. And the planets they were looking at were further. Oh, you can't see my hand, but a whole lot further. You see how the perspective would make it look big? Jesus, I hope I'm right. Anyway, I'm going to get back to talking to the Lord. Okay, I'll, um, no, I'll take Buddy out and then I'll finish because I don't like to be rushed. Okay, I plead the blood of Jesus over this video and my last one. And I hope I didn't sound too, um, lacking in faith. I, I, I didn't mean to. I know the Lord is in control. He's in control of, of everything. This virus, my life, your life, when he's coming. We just got to have faith, keep believing, and keep looking up. You know, metaphorically. I mean, do, do you find yourself really for real looking up? Look at that, how the light just changed. I do some, but I think that's more metaphorical. Keep looking up. Don't get down about it. The Lord is going to come. He said he would. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. If it were not so, I would have told you. And I go to prepare a place for you so that when I come again, I will bring you to myself that where I am, there you may be also. You think on that. In my Father's, yeah, you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. That's John chapter 14 verses 1 through, I don't know, four or five that's the verse reference okay so I finished pleading the blood of Jesus over this video and my other one over myself the internet connection my Wi-Fi over each and every one of you and all of your devices keep saying Psalm 91 and believe it and Psalm 51 and um we have to claim that. That is our preventative for this virus. We don't need to worry about that. It'll say in there, no plague shall enter into my home. And we have to claim it. You can't just say something because it's in the Bible and everybody else is doing it and it's going to work for you. That's, that's what a lot of folks do when they go up to the altar to get saved. They repeat a prayer after the preacher or some elder. And then they say, okay, baptism is next Sunday. Bring a towel and change clothes. So they do. And they go through the motions. And they feel good about it. But there's no real heart change. They don't really believe it. It's not really seated in their heart so it's the same kind of thing you have to believe it you have to know that your God is capable of keeping you from get it, getting it okay so I gotta believe the same thing I am going to be fine and I say uh, let's see did I plead the blood of Jesus over all your devices and your internet connections and with that, I'll say bye for now. I will talk to you later.